Hey Tubes, I'm coming to you here with a little update on the, the UGV, our unmanned ground vehicle project. And uh, it's been a long time since I did an update video. I think it's been, well it was January when I last did the video and that was the intro video. And I want to get out of the habit of doing that, waiting so long for, for updates because just like that Maytag, it was five months before I did another video and it was done. So I definitely don't want that to happen with this project. But I want to show you what's been happening with this. I haven't done a whole lot, but did make some some breakthroughs and we also have a couple of new ideas for it that should be pretty interesting uh, once we once we add them in and if you didn't see the old video this is this is our our beaver beta electrical android vehicle exploration ranger that's uh, carnivore 10 came up with that name for us and um, what it's going to be is it's going to be remote control and it's going to have a camera with a video transmitter on board so we'll be able to drive it all around the neighborhood and uh, sit in the basement kind of like the Morris rover or uh, what the bomb squad uses and whatnot should be a neat project uh, just something we're doing on our own and um, so I got a couple a couple breakthroughs a couple new ideas we're going to revisit an old project too uh, and I'm going to incorporate that onto this too but just wanted to give you an update uh, I'm going to get you on the tripod here uh, move you around a little bit and go into a little more detail stand by a second so one of the things you might have noticed is the speed controller is missing that was the box that was right here and the reason I got rid of that is because it would be a little too tricky for me to make this remote control with that old speed controller. The only really option I had is I had that uh, the joystick. And the problem with that was that uh, yeah, we would have had to hook some servos up to it. We would have had to make them like you know, fork, uh, two forks to, or maybe some ball joints to hook onto the joystick. And uh, that was too difficult and I had some servos that weren't strong enough anyway. Uh, and then the other the other problem with that is I thought it would be ugly with I'd have this uh, the, the little joystick here with a bunch of servos going back and forth. And I, I didn't think that would look good. I'd rather have it all electronic. So what we've done is we sold the speed controller. I got $95 for that on eBay, the speed controller and the, uh, the joystick, the whole assembly there. And on the way I have, it's called a saber tooth. And if I had, if I had a picture of it, I'd show it to you. But the saber tooth is basically a um, the real versatile. There's a lot you can do with it. It'll take analog, digital, uh, PCM, post post code modulation, uh, all kinds of different inputs, and uh, it'll drive both the motors. It'll do 25 amps per motor per channel. So that's going to work out real good for us. So that, that's what we'll use for our speed controller. And they're pretty common for these projects. Uh, you see them on the, the RC lawnmowers and. Uh, other robotic projects like that. Uh, so that's what we're going to do as far as the speed controller. And so that'll be here in a couple days. So that'll be fun when we get to drive this thing around in remote control for this first time. But so that's what we're going to do with the speed controller. Now here's the video transmitter for you. This this little guy's all done here. And I'm real happy with the way it turned out. Um, so far so good. Haven't tested it out yet, but it does power up and it didn't smoke. So that's usually a good sign. Um, and here's, here's my solder job underneath. There's a couple big blobs, most notably, uh, I think this one and this one over here. But other than that, it seems to be good. No, no shorts or anything like that. Um, got a couple uh, chip capacitors in there. There's a, there's a transistor there. I think that's the main uh, RF transistor. Um, but the only thing we have to do with this is we need a metal box for it. I was just going to put it in a... Uh, I was going to get a plastic project box from Radio Shack, but it turns out you need a metal one for shielding and RF grounding. Um, so as soon as we get that, we're going to need the connectors. We're going to need RCA connectors for the video. We're going to need, uh, I think I'm going to do a Type N connector for the RF, because uh, I'm not planning to use this for anything else, and Type N's a lot less loss at, uh, at the higher frequency in the UHF range. And um, we're going to need some coax and... Uh, just a power switch and maybe an LED for a light. So as soon as we get that, uh, then we'll just have to take it. I have a buddy of mine who's real good with uh, good good with electronics, and he'll help us align this because I get the basic idea. But it's nice to have somebody that really knows what they're doing to help out with that. So as soon as we get that done, then the video transmitter will be working. So then we'll have uh, that will be the main that will be our two main goals. We'll have it remote control and remote, and uh, we'll have the video transmitter working. Um, we'll do videos with that. We're going to make some antennas and whatnot, so that should be neat. And then here's the only other thing. I'll make this real quick because I think the video is getting a little long. Uh, you may remember this from last summer. This was we were trying to make some night vision goggles. And so if you don't remember this, or if you weren't a subscriber then, 
Um, these are some infrared LEDs, and these are big LEDs, by the way. They're 10 millimeter. That's a centimeter. Uh, most LEDs are about half the size of that, five millimeters. But they're they're real bright, um, and like I say, they're infrared. So the neat thing is, is you can turn these on, and you won't see any light. There's just a dull red glow. So I mean, you you can see, you can tell that they're on. But other than that, you wouldn't know that uh, they're shooting a huge beam of light at your face. But when you turn on an infrared camera, a camera that's capable of seeing that light, I'll tell you what, it's like a floodlight. I, I took, beamed it around my, loom, my room, excuse me there, and it was, it was really, it was like a spotlight uh, wherever I pointed it. So that's going to give us our light. And so th this I made up last summer for testing, and then I've got 10 more here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an array. So when we want to drive this thing around at night, we're going to flip these infrared LEDs on, and we're going to be able to drive around like it's daylight, and nobody will be able to see the light. Now I'm not I'm not trying to do that because I'm trying to go places where I'm not supposed to with this. But I just think that'll be really neat. That'll make it more like something that uh, something a little more professional and not just something that we built in our backyard. But that's about it for the robot here. Uh, I wanted to give you an update and let you know what's going on with this. And uh, the speed controller is in the mail, so when we have that, uh, I guess that'll be our next update on this. We'll be playing with that and. Uh, probably have my buddies over and we'll be sitting on and driving each other around but until then uh, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed okie dokie tubes